You know, I just realized that uh, I still haven't done the ability for you to click on a brick to edit it. Uh, now, my bricks are huge. Uh, we're going to be in a mech, so we're actually a little bit smaller than the mech currently is, but either way, we're talking about uh, bricks that are, you know, 5 meters by 5 meters by 1 meter. So I'm not going to implement an inventory of bricks. You're not going to be able to just pick up a hundred of these bricks. They're way too big. But I do want you to be able to edit the bricks. So in this episode, we're going to implement the ability to pick up a brick, carry it around, and then put it back down. So the first thing we need to do for that is we need to have a controller script. So let's go into our scripts here. We could keep using world uh, and just expand it, but let's not. Let's go ahead and have a player IO script. And we're going to put this on the main camera just because I tend to put things on the main camera if I need one in the scene. And just like the world script, we're going to make the player IO script public static player IO current player IO. And then we say current player IO equals this. No problem, right? So normally we would be doing something uh, significantly more complicated with this, but we're going to start off slow, and we're just going to look for the left mouse click. So if you didn't click, go away. We'll deal with that later. So if, they, if we did click, then we need to go and look where we are looking. We need to fight, figure out where the center of the screen currently is. Um, now, normally I would actually put in a little texture so that we can see the center of the screen. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go ahead and add ourselves a 3D texture, a GUI texture, I mean, uh, which is always called Unity Watermark Small, um, which doesn't make any sense because that's just the default, obviously, that's just the default image that gets put there. You don't really care about that. So we want it to be at 0.5.5, and we want it to be from negative 3, negative 3, 6, 6. There we go. And that should give us a little blob in the middle. Yep, see? We got a little little brick in the middle. Now the mouse you can see here is just because we're in debug mode. Uh, normally we would lock the mouse, and the player wouldn't be able to see the mouse at all, just like in Minecraft. Um, I'm not actually sure whether that's how I'm going to do it in... Uh, I probably will. That's a good way to do it, so yeah, that's how we're going to do it. We're going to lock the mouse down in release mode, but that's fine. For now, we need to be able to see what's in the center, and we can. So, with that in mind, we need to do a raycast. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a ray. Uh, we actually need a viewpoint to ray. Um, here we are. And the viewport we want is new vector 3, 0.5f, 0.5f, and 0.5f. Only two of those actually have to be 0.5, but it won't hurt to make the unimportant one 0.5, and I don't happen to know whether it's Y or Z that needs to be 0, that can be 0. Whatever. So let's go ahead and test and see whether we hit something. What should our maximum range be? Let's go ahead and make it 8. Let's go ahead and make it so we can customize it. Oh, uh, but we're using an int. I guess we should use a float just in case for some reason we want to set it to 7.9. Alright, so if we hit something good, otherwise we, we actually want to go ahead and say that we didn't into the log. If we did, let's go ahead and just say what we hit. Alright, so now we've got it so that when we click, it'll tell us what we clicked on. Use of un... Ah, click, nothing was there. Good. And five on chunk. Good. So you can see that we have these values putting in just fine. Um, we are getting precisely the values we want to get. So now it's just a matter of uh, 
de determining which chunk we've actually clicked on, or rather not which chunk, which uh, point within the chunk that we've actually clicked on. And here is where we need to be a little bit careful. The actual hit dot point that we're using, the y value has not been multiplied by our brick height. But when we pass the chunk, when we go, when we say uh, chunk c, or chunk chunk equals hit dot transform dot get component chunk, not get, get component. Come on. Uh, then we just put in some safety if chunk equals null return debug dot log clicked on hit dot transform dot name and it's not a chunk. Otherwise, it is a chunk, and we can normally say chunk dot get byte and then pass it a world position hit dot point. But unfortunately, that's probably going to be incredibly incorrect, and the reason for that is because um, let's go ahead and and the reason for that is because uh, we are not uh, correctly uh, offset. Our y values are much too low. So when I click here, this chunk thinks that I'm clicking down below. It thinks that I'm clicking on a tiny, tiny. Uh, low hanging piece. So let's go here and if I click oh, come on, click here. Eh. Yeah, maybe it's not. These look accurate. No, it is wrong. Good. Uh, I was going to get a little annoyed if it wasn't wrong because I had totally misunderstood what was going on. So you can see that all of these are taking values from this ground rather than from themselves. And that's because it thinks our y value is ridiculously small. So if if you are using a y uh, height, height multiple of 1, then that won't be an issue for you. But if you're like me, then we have to actually multiply the hit dot point by a certain amount. like that. And then we have to actually pass it p rather than the actual coordinate. And this is, um, I won't say it's a hack, but it is something you have to keep aware of that you're using two different coordinate systems. So here you can see that's a zero, and that's a zero, and that's, why are they all zero? Oh, of course they're zero because we're not rounding. So if we click on the edges, then we'll get the right values. No, we won't. Either way, the problem is because we're clicking at the edge of the brick. So any kind of rounding is going to be an arbitrary mess. So let's go ahead and make it so that the rounding works correctly. The way we're going to do that is we're going to add the normal to our value here. Um, divided by 2 is fine. We're not doing any tapering or anything, so that'll work out. Might as well just make it divided by 4. But we want to go ahead and actually... Uh, convert these values into integer values just so that we don't have to worry about them rounding wrong. So p.x equals uh, mathf.floor p.x and we just repeat that like so. Ah, a clunk. Click. Why is it a zero? It shouldn't be a zero. All right, so something wrong with our thing here. Brilliant. I was so hoping to just be able to just go bam, 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 we're done, yay. Um, but I screwed it up somewhere. Oh. The normal is away from the face rather than towards it. There we go. That's like what we want. Perfect. So that is definitely correct. So our next step is that when we have clicked, we actually want to go ahead and change that. But at the moment, chunk doesn't have a change brick call. So let's go ahead and add that. Might as well just go ahead and add it to the bottom. Uh, I left this tangentify function in, um, even though I'm not using it, just because I thought maybe it might help me figure out what the heck a tangent is. But I'm going to go ahead and delete it. 
you can go get it from the previous, uh, 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 you can download the previous save file uh, and it will have that, that tangentify function in it. Well, we called it set brick in the last episode, or in the last series, so let's call it set brick again. Like so. And then we just say, uh, do we have a... I was going to see, I don't, we don't currently have an is valid check, so right now we'll have to do that manually. It's the same, don't worry about it. Otherwise, set it and return true. But we have to remember to recalculate everything, don't we? So let's go and find our recalculation function. Here it is. Now, if we wanted to be real clever, we could come up with a utility for actually making that only modify the mesh in some small way rather than recalculating it from scratch. But that doesn't matter very much to us. Recalculating the mesh is a pretty easy process. So let's go ahead and see whether this works. Click. Nope. Because I forgot to call it. Brilliant! Oh, well, we can just pass them here. Grab these and put them in this. parsing error. I don't need these. Where's your parsing error? What the hell are you talking about? Oh, I've got random <laughs> random thing that was put in there when I wasn't looking. Okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and see whether this works. Click. Yep, it works fine. So there is, in fact, an issue here, and that issue is that... Interesting. Uh, that it doesn't work correctly between chunks, but more than simply not working correctly between chunks, um, when we're on the edge of a chunk, it's going to not recalculate the other chunk, which means that we're going to end up uh, with with uh, gaps in our chunks, which I can show you by simply searching for the chunk that is next, and we'll be able to tell right away because it will be uh, there. See. It's got a mesh see-through bit, and that's because um, we're not recalculating the other chunk, and we'll need to if it's on the edge. If it's not on the edge, who gives a shit? Um, so the other question is, does it actually fail when we're not on our chunk? And it looks like it looks like it's not getting the correct chunk. So let's go ahead and take a look at the chunk. Um, so when we get it, we say chunk equals hit dot transform to get component chunk. So that's actually the chunk that we are currently like clicking on. So that shouldn't that should always return the correct chunk. So let's go ahead and debug that. But let's also go ahead and implement the uh, thing where this gets fixed. So we say down here at the bottom, before we return true. We say if x equals zero, then uh, I guess we have to do it slow here. Chunk chunk equals get find chunk. Um, transform dot position minus uh, vector three dot right. 
times... Uh, it doesn't really matter what it's multiplied. Uh, uh, let's just do this. Let's just do this legal way. I was going to just half-ass it, but it's better to do it out, outright correctly here. There we go. So we go to the left if we're if we need to do to do just that. Um, we go to the right if we need to do that. And we go forward and backwards if we need to do that. You know, just to be on the safe side, in case of rounding errors, I'm going to make these two. It shouldn't make a difference, um, but I don't like rounding errors. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a shot in the same way we did before. Let's find where we have a chunk switch. These are wide chunks. Ah, there we are. We found the chunk switch. And you can see that it worked. Uh, it's no longer a, a masked problem. There's no longer any problem with the sides being transparent. So you can see that it does, in fact, find the chunk at 020. But then when we tell it to remove the chunk, uh, the, the brick, it, it fails to remove the brick. And do you know why that is? Because int x, int y, and int z are in local coordinates, are, are rather in world coordinates, and we're referring to them as local coordinates. So we either have to transform them into local coordinates, or we have to take a world coordinate as an option instead, which is what we're going to do. We're always going to have these integer values as local coordinates. So if we wanted to pass it a world coordinate, then we can just say world pause minus equals transform.position. And then we can pass it return set brick uh, brick mathf.floor to int world pause.x and so on. Like that. But that means that over here in player.io we have to actually pass it the proper uh, world height instead of this as a, the proper world position rather than those things. So that's what we're going to do. Alright, shall we go ahead and see whether that works? I gotta have my mouse in the frame in this debug mode. Yep, you can see that we are now not on the default chunk and it is working fine. But that's just deleting bricks. We want to be able to carry the brick around and put it down somewhere. So how are we gonna do that? Well, I think that it's probably long enough this episode, so let's go ahead and do that in the next episode.